Israel admits it has mistakenly killed three hostages during combat in Gaza. We have some live pictures for you now coming from the Israel-Gaza border. And joining us live, we have Uri from Israel, Uri Shakam. And good evening to you there, Uri. I do good morning believe we have for you. Our, our audience. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this news is just coming in and we believe that the IDF mistakenly have killed three hostages during Gaza battles. What more can you tell us? So indeed, according to the IDF spokesman, uh, this morning Israel time, about 12 or 14 hours ago, um, special, special IDF forces that are operating in northern Gaza identified three uh, people that were uh, mistakenly uh, recognized as terrorists, uh, and they were, sh they were shot dead. Uh, immediately after they were shot down, um, the IDF understood that it probably is a mistake, so their bodies were taken uh, to a morgue in Israel, uh, in Israel, where they were identified as uh, three of uh, the hostages uh, abducted from uh, Israel to Gaza on October 7th. One of the one of the abductees um, is uh, a 28 years old uh, Yotam Chaim from uh, Kfar Gaza. The other one is uh, Samer El Talalka. He's a Bedouin uh, employee that uh, worked in one of the kibbutzim surrounding Gaza and was abducted from his uh, workplace. The third the third name hasn't been. Uh, uh, released by uh, the IDF per the request of the family. They rather uh, not to have the name. Uh, th 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 these are the facts. Um, I think that many Israelis, including uh, myself, have uh, a, a very, a very hard evening this, uh, this evening in uh, Israel. We know that the IDF is working so hard together with the intelligence in order to extract uh, the hostages. And we, would, we understand that they work under um, very hard uh, conditions. But uh, the fact that uh, hostages were, were uh, identified as, as terrorists is, is hard to all of us. Yet we understand that this is a war and this uh, area where the IDF is operating uh, is a very dangerous area where terrorists uh, were, were uh, attacking uh, the ADF even without, even without uh, having guns. Uh, they were suicide uh, terrorists. There were terrorists that are trying to um, uh, withdraw, withdraw uh, try to uh, have the IDF go into buildings in order to uh, bomb this, those uh, buildings. We understand that it can happen. Still, our heart is broken because of this incident. Uri, have you heard at all from the families of the hostages who have now been deceased? Have you heard from them at all? Uh, we we know the stories of the of the hostages. We know that one of them, uh, the the Bedouin guy, was supposed to get uh, married soon. We know that. Uh, the family told uh, the, the reporters prior for getting this uh, horrific uh, uh, announcement. Uh, what were the plans of these uh, of these uh, people? But currently, there is no response by the families. I think that the hearts of everyone goes out for these families in this uh, in this hard night, um, and and we still. Uh, haven't heard from 100 and 130 hostages that are still holding, held in uh, Gaza. Now, the thing is, Janie, that we, we hear stories from the hostages that were released uh, lately. And we hear terrible stories regarding the conditions where the Hamas terrorists were holding those, uh, those uh, hostages, those civilians, innocent uh, civilians, in dark places, with uh, uh, 10, 10 people in a narrow room, without feeding them, without providing them medications or uh, any, any uh, fresh air and things like this. And as days goes by, we are becoming more and more concerned of what's uh, what's happening with those uh, hostages. 
And Uri, absolutely very devastating indeed. And our thoughts go to the families who are having to deal with this news. You mentioned, of course, the other hostages are still waiting to be released. In your opinion, how do you think this is potentially going to affect negotiations? It, it, it's hard. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell uh, because because we understand that there is a strong will in Israel to get all the hostages uh, back safe and sound to their uh, to their uh, families and beloved ones. We understand that the Hamas, as a terrorist organization, is uh, going to put difficulties because he understands the importance as Israel uh, sees it. Nevertheless, uh, we understand that if any negotiations uh, will uh, commence, it will not stop the IDF from uh, keep uh, doing whatever that's in their power to extract uh, hostages. Just yesterday, um, the IDF recovered two bodies of, of hostages. Once again, this is heartbreaking that uh, they were murdered uh, during their uh, captivity. Nevertheless, uh, I think that at least uh, some people find comfort that their families uh, have have um, uh, have a closure for for this uh, tragedy. Uh, this is a very very complex uh, situation. Where in one hand the uh, Israeli government has uh, decided to uh, make sure that the Hamas terrorist organization will not uh, endanger Israelis as they. Uh, did in October seventh. Uh, on, on the other hand, it's completely, um, I would say, uh, ha has the obligation of returning as many hostages as uh, possible, and that is why the um, high officials and the most uh, and, and everybody are dealing with this on the surface and under the uh, surface, or uh, let's say, with the confidential uh, actions that not all of us are aware of. And Uri, do you have any information at all on the news recently on Hamas firing rockets to Jerusalem? Do you have any information that you can share with us on that? Well, this afternoon, uh, the Hamas uh, shot rockets towards towards uh, Jerusalem uh, uh, region for the first time in about forty five days, uh, more more than a half a month and a, and a half. Uh, thank God, uh, some of the missiles were intercepted by the Iron Dome, uh, by the Iron Dome uh, system, and there were not no uh, casualties. Um, with, with that, Hamas, uh, not Hamas, but but there is a constant fire on the northern border as uh, well. The city of Kiryat Shmona, which is the um, the most northern uh, city in uh, Israel, was also attacked and is being constantly uh, attacked on a daily uh, basis from uh, Lebanon. And this is um, the, the situation in where the, the Israeli's population is living for the last uh, two, two, and, uh, two months and, and uh, something. That means people cannot have a regular uh, uh, life. The fact that there are no uh, casualties is, is only thanks to the fact that we have uh, a, protection, a protective uh, system. Nevertheless, uh, think about the children that cannot uh, play outside because there are sirens. Think about the 160,000 Israelis that are, uh, are actually refugees in their, in their own uh, country. And adding what we just spoke about, the uh, IDF operation in Gaza and the hostages uh, crisis, this is a very complex uh, situation. Um, and, and still, everybody are uh, still getting ready if something will uh, begin in the northern uh, front, something from uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. Uri Shakam, we do have to wrap it up there, but we really appreciate you coming on this uh, this morning, the evening for you. Thank you so much.